Eight years ago, I made a video showing you how to make these really cool Halloween pumpkins. Today, I'm gonna recreate these cool designs, but this time, because it's summer, I'm using watermelons. Let's see how they turn out. First, I'm gonna make this one with fangs. And because watermelons are generally taller rather than wide, like a pumpkin, I'm laying it on its side. Then I'm using a marker pen and drawing on the eyes and the mouth. I cut a hole in the top, and I'm hollowing it out with a big spoon, like you would a pumpkin. I'm scraping it off the skin on the inside too, and emptying it all out. Then using a sharp knife, I'm carefully cutting out the eyes. Then working my way around the mouth too. Peel it back to reveal this huge big mouth. It's looking great. To make the fangs, we're actually going to use this piece that we cut out, same as I did when I made the pumpkin. Clean off any last remnants of watermelon by scratching them off. Then use your knife to slice a fan shape like this. I'm using a cocktail stick, which I snapped in half, and push it into the fang. Then fix it into the mouth. I cut out a load more, some different sizes and used the same technique to fix them all the way across the mouth, top and bottom side, so it looks like this. Pretty cool, huh? So, that's the first one made, on to the next. For this one, I used the stalk of the pumpkin as the nose, so I'm doing a similar thing with a watermelon. Then draw the face on around the nose, starting with the eyes, and the mouth. I'm including an extra row for teeth. Then cut a hole in the top, and I'm using my pineapple spiralizer to help hollow it out. I found it works really well with watermelons, it just screws in. Then you can just lift out a whole plug. And I really like using it with this cutting gadget to make some perfect bite-sized pieces. Hollow out the rest with a spoon. Then we're ready to carve the face. I used my knife to cut just through the skin around the eye, then carefully removed the skin to expose the layer underneath. Try to keep it nice and neat. Then I did the same on the other side. For the mouth, I cut out a hole up to the teeth line, then cut just through the skin again like we did with the eyes, and peeled off the skin to reveal the white underneath. Once it's all off, we can start carving in the teeth. I just cut a little gap in between each one, and worked my way across. And it's looking great! The final thing I'm doing is using some black acrylic paint to paint in some pupils in the eyes. And there it is! It looks brilliant! For the next one, I'm lying this watermelon down on its side again, then drawing on the eyes, and mouth, to match the one on the pumpkin. This time we're doing fangs again, but we're doing them slightly differently. I'm drawing them in. Then open up the top, hollow it out, and cut out the eyes. To do the mouth, carefully cut in between each of the teeth, and remove this zigzag piece from the middle. It's already looking good, but to finish off the teeth, we're going to remove the skin from in front of each fang again, to make them really stand out. Take your time, and do be careful, you don't want to snap one. And when you're done, it should look like this. So, now we've done all three, we can arrange them just like we did with the pumpkins. Pretty cool, huh? They make a great display. And you can let me know in the comments which ones you think look better, the watermelons or the pumpkins. Now we're going to take a look at some of my favourite watermelon kitchen gadgets that I've used over the years. And I'm starting with this watermelon windmill gadget. This thing is really cool. It's got this rotating windmill device on the one end, and this depth gauge underneath. It's mounted onto this piece of stainless steel channel with a handle on the other end. It's a curious looking thing, so let's see how it works. To use it, we start by chopping a watermelon in half, and unfortunately, this melon seems to have a bit of a void inside of the fruit. But let's see how well it works. We need to chop off the ends of the melon. Then take the tool. I set it at about a 1cm depth. Then gave it a go. 
And wow, it works really well. That really is cool. We get these perfect slices of watermelon. I emptied mine out into a bowl, and I'm doing a few more. You can change the depth, but oh, it's broken out of the end. But I did find you can hold the end of the melon where the cutter breaks through, which does help to stop it. It really is a satisfying tool to use. And on this melon, I even used it without chopping off the one end. Here's another really cool gadget, and it's actually two gadgets in one. And this piece is designed to remove the skin from the fruit. To use it, we need to slice the melon into segments, like this. Then we can use this tool to safely cut in between the fruit and the peel, like this. You need to sort of rotate it to match the angle of the skin as you cut through. And let's take a look. It's worked really well, removing nearly all the fruit from the skin. It's really impressive. And this little gadget that came with it is actually for cutting watermelon balls. I'll test it on the other half. The first one didn't come out very well, it does take a little bit of practice. You have to sort of spin it in your fingertips, and once you've done a few, they do get better. The next gadget we're going to look at is this thing. It's a watermelon slicing tool. And to use it, we cut our watermelon in half again. Then take the slicer, turn it upside down, and cut into the watermelon like this. I'm doing a whole series of slices. Then turn the slicer around and use it to pull out a nice big piece of melon. And that's actually worked really well. It's a clever idea, but it is a little tricky to use. When I first tried it, it felt like it was getting a bit stuck. And I didn't actually cut all the way to the bottom, so I got these really shallow pieces. And I found even if I did cut through deep, it did still leave a lot of fruit behind in the skin because it leaves big corners. So I cleaned it out with a spoon. But with a bit more practice, I did find I was able to improve with it. You can get some really lovely big slabs of melon. If you'd like to see how I did this, or how to make these really cool watermelon drinks dispensers. You can click on the links. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.